We're doing scenery, ground cover, static grass, and more on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Have you ever gotten bogged down in a project, started something, and then just couldn't seem to get back to it or couldn't seem to get it finished? If that's happened to you, tell me about it in the comments section down below. Well, that's exactly what happened to me on the scenery on my layout. I started building scenery in the mountain area, which you normally see behind me when I do most of my introductions and conclusions to my video. I started that process, put in some ground cover, put in some trees, and began to see the scenery come to shape. And then due to a variety of circumstances, I left that project and had not gotten back to it for two years. Well, I've been looking at that scene for a long time and wishing that it was more complete, wishing that it looked more like what I had envisioned. So this week, I decided to get back to that scene and add some more scenic details. Specifically, today I'm going to be putting in ground cover in some of the foreground areas, applying static grass, some shrubs, bushes, and other details. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. And I'll come back again in a future video and show you how I installed more trees in the mountain areas and some underbrush on some of those steep mountain areas that I have as part of the layout. But now, let's get over to the layout and get started building some scenery. This is the area that I'm working with at the moment. For this video, I'm going to be working down uh, along this ground area that you see I've, I've done just a little bit of work in some, in some spots, uh, mostly for some, some video work. Uh, but most of this is just painted, uh, but has no ground cover on it whatsoever. So today I'm going to be working on putting on some ground cover and uh, beginning some layers of texture, including some static grass. I uh, also have uh, one rock casting over here that I'm going to be uh, painting and staining uh, to, to match the rest as well. I'm going to begin by coloring that rock casting that needed to be painted. I'm going to start with a Woodland Scenics Rock Wash in a stone gray. This is a fairly dark color, but it's a thin wash, so uh, it will not give too thick of a coverage on this uh, little unpainted rock. I'm going to just cover the rock completely with this stone gray, and then I'm going to thin it down a little bit just by brushing some water onto it to kind of lighten the color a little bit. When that has dried, I'm going to come back with a yellow ochre to give the stone some color. Again, I'm going to just apply a drop onto the rock itself and spread it around. And again, I'll use some water to thin it a bit. I want to make sure that some of that dark stone gray continues to show through in some of the crevices to give some relief and some depth to this rock. After that has dried, I come back with uh, India ink wash. Uh, I make this by adding one teaspoon of India ink to a full pint of 70% isopropyl alcohol. Whenever you put this on, it's going to make the stone look very, very dark, but as it dries, it's going to wash down, it's going to lighten up as you see here, but this will definitely give some great relief to those nooks and crevices. Finally, I'm going to come back with a light tan, kind of an earth color, and just dry brush some highlights, uh, some sun highlights, and, and again, to give a little relief to this rock, and that's going to complete it. I'm coming in next with some full strength white glue, and we're going to use this for putting down our ground cover. I'm going to apply the glue full strength to the layout, and then take a paintbrush and I'm going to spread it thin, uh, but uh, completely covering. I don't want pools of glue. I want it fully spread out, but I want to completely cover all of the area that I'm going to be putting ground cover on. I make my ground cover out of real dirt. Uh, I literally go out in seasons when it's dry and uh, scoop up uh, loose dirt from my own yard 
and I sift it through a variety of sifters, as you see here. Uh, I have a coarse one and then a very fine one. And then I make the final sift uh, by sifting the dirt through an old stocking, which basically leaves me with several varieties of coarse material. But the final ground cover material that I come up with after sifting it through the stocking is basically just a powdery dust. Uh, but it makes a great ground cover. It uh, looks really great when it's put down. And here is some of that uh, ground cover, some of that real dirt right here. And I can apply this with a, a sprinkler bottle, and sometimes I do. But in this case, working in a small area in between the track and this rock cliff here, it's easier just to pinch it with my fingers and uh, put it on and spread it out that way. I'm literally just spreading the ground cover uh, enough to cover the glue. Uh, it's going on a little thicker than what I will need, but ultimately I'll remove the excess and again it's dirt, I can always replace it. Getting back in the little crevices underneath the rock is easiest done with a piece of paper that I fold uh, in order to give it some stiffness. I've seen some people do this and then they blow it into place, but this dirt is so fine a powder it's almost impossible to blow. Uh, so literally, I just stick the paper up in the, in the crevice and shake the ground cover into place. Once I have the ground cover all laid down, I let it dry in the glue for, oh, 15 or 20 minutes or so, just to let it set in. And then I come in with a shop vac and just vacuum up the excess. Now, I'm not actually touching the ground cover here. Uh, I'm hovering about a quarter of an inch above it and just taking the excess away. Now I'm going to come in with some 70% isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to soak the entire area. I'm using the isopropyl alcohol as an agent to break the surface tension of the adhesive that I'm going to use to finally hold this ground cover in place. And for an adhesive, I'm using Woodland Scenic's Scenic Cement. The alcohol will help the scenic cement flow into the entire area and help it get down into the ground cover and it'll glue everything in place really well. As with the alcohol and the scenic cement as well, I apply it from the edge to wick it into the rest of the scene. I try not to drop it into the middle of open areas as it can leave droplets and uh, mar the surface. Now when this dries, as you see, it, it has a variety of colors here. You see the earth texture, or the earth color, but you also see these darker areas where some extra scenic cement pooled. In, in this ditch area that uh, is right along the tracks, that is definitely okay, because I want that to look like there has been some water standing in it, and it has some mud in it, and the rest of it will just give some variety to the color of the ground. Next, I'm going to apply a little bit of ground foam. I'm using Woodland Scenics in three colors, a burnt grass, a yellow grass, and a green grass. Now, I do not intend to cover the entire ground with these. Uh, these are only going to represent some undergrowth down deep inside the grass. And I'm going to begin by putting down some more Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement, but this time I'm not covering the entire area, just some patchy areas where I want to put this undergrowth. I start with a green grass, but I want to be careful not to apply too much. Then I apply some yellow grass, and I want to use the least of this. A little bit goes a long way with this yellow color. And then finally, I go over it with a burnt grass. And this is going to represent the majority of the color of this undergrowth. I'm going to go right over the top of some of the green grass and the yellow grass, as well as cover some areas that I didn't cover with the other colors. Uh, and that's going to give me just some nice variety down inside of the static grass that we're going to be applying next. Before applying the static grass, I want to use some paper towels to cover areas where I don't want to get the static grass uh, on, and I'm going to dampen those paper towels, and that'll help for any stray static grass to kind of stick to the damp paper towels and, and not get in the areas where I don't want it. I'm also going to mask off this little stone that I've just painted so as to keep the static grass off of it. Using Scenic Cement again, I spray it uh, evenly and liberally over the entire area. And then I'm using a basket uh, type static grass applicator. This is a battery powered one I bought from Micromark. 
but you can get them from a number of other places as well. And I'm using two different types of static grass. Both are from sill floor, but I'm using a longer four millimeter static grass that is a autumn grass, kind of a burnt grass color. And I'm using a shorter two millimeter late summer, kind of a greener grass. I have them mixed together to kind of give that combination of some shorter green grass as well as some taller grass that has begun to yellow, as you would see in mid to late summer, which is the time period of the year that I am modeling. And you simply shake this on. You press the button on the battery powered uh, applicator uh, and you have to make sure that the alligator clip is down in the liquid of the glue and uh, the electricity flowing through there causes the static that makes the grass stand up. Next I'm going to apply some talus underneath the rock cliffs to represent some fallen rocks. You see I have a variety of sizes and textures of talus here and I'm just using a plastic spoon to kind of work it into the cracks and crannies down underneath this rock cliff and I'm also placing a few of the larger pieces out into the open seam. The larger pieces I'm going to glue down with just full strength white glue. Uh, the smaller pieces I tried cementing down here with scenic cement but I found that the talus is so porous that it just soaked the scenic cement up. Ultimately what I did was diluted some white glue, three parts glue to one part water and that worked a lot better. Next, I'm using some grass tufts that uh, came from Noak. I uh, have a couple different colors here, kind of a yellow grass and a green grass. And these you simply pluck off the carrier sheet, apply a dot of white glue to the bottom, and stick them wherever you want them. Uh, you just almost cannot use too many of these. They really give some, some variety to the texture uh, of your scene. Uh, you can see here I also have taken some Scenics, uh, Woodland Scenics underbrush, an olive green color and used it to simulate some bushes and shrubs, uh, some low undergrowth in, in places around the layout. Next, I'm going to apply some trees. Here I have some aspen trees that I've made and in the area where I'm going to uh, put those aspen trees, I pressed down the static grass and then applied some uh, dark green leaf and also some brown dried leaves uh, as you would see underneath trees like that. And then I simply used a pin vise and a small drill bit to drill a small hole and then a little white glue and I plant the tree right into the layout. Uh, the glue that is around the bottom of the tree after I've pushed it into the hole, I cover up with a little earth color uh, ground foam from Woodland Scenics. This kind of gives that uh, illusion of some, some bare earth that would be right underneath the tree where less grass would grow. It's always a good idea to plant trees in odd numbers. They just tend to look more natural. Uh, even numbers tend to look a little too symmetrical and too perfect. For some reason, odd numbers just look better. So you see with these aspen trees here, just planting three of them in this particular spot, uh, but that odd number gives them a, a, a neater look. I'm also going to plant some pine trees in this area. Uh, I used three aspen trees and I'm going to plant five pine trees. And again, I use the exact same technique, a uh, pin vise and a small drill bit to drill a hole, a little bit of white glue on the trunk of the tree, uh, stick it into place, apply a little bit of that earth colored ground foam to the bottom and uh, my trees can be planted in fairly large numbers fairly quickly and they give a nice look. The final touch is I wanted to go back to this talus because it was a little light and a little yellow in color. So I got some more of that stone gray Woodland Scenics wash and I watered it down to make it an even thinner wash and went over the talus in order to darken it up and make it match the rest of my rocks a little bit better. And with that, I've made a lot of progress in making these scenes look a lot more realistic. I still have a ways to go, some more details that I want to add, but this has gone a long way towards making this part of my layout look a lot more realistic. 
Well, we've made a lot of progress on this scene today, and I am liking the way that it is looking so much more than I did before I started. Now, this scene still has a ways to go. It still it doesn't quite have that level of realism that I want. It needs some more details, and we're going to come back and add some of those in a future video, as well as installing some more trees and underbrush in the mountain section behind this scene, as I mentioned in the intro to this video. So you'll want to watch for those videos as they come out in future weeks. Well, if you enjoyed this video today, here's a link to some more videos that I know you'll enjoy as well. I also hope you'll check out the description down below this video where you're going to find links to my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week. And there you'll find many of the products that I use in model railroading as well as photography and video making and other things, including many of the materials that I used in building this scenery today. So if those are of interest to you, you'll want to go and check those out. But you know, even if you, you do your regular Amazon shopping through that page that I have linked in the description, you'll get the same Amazon prices and service that you always get and be helping to support this channel and Great Model Railroad content on YouTube at the same time. Also in the description, you'll find links to my Patreon page and also ways that you can connect with me on a variety of social media. So check out those items down in the description below. Well, be sure and join me again next Tuesday as I'll be bringing you another great model railroading video and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?